Welcome to RP Gamepire. I'm David. Thank you for joining me in this how to play video of Jetpack Joyride. If you haven't had a chance yet, please check out our review and playthrough videos. Before you, you see me holding the collector's box, which was an option for Kickstarter backers. Inside the box, you'd see what I assume is the retailer edition. I'll be just going over how to play the most basic pieces because uh, there's a bunch of little mini expansions that I'm not too sure what's shipping with the retailer edition and what's shipping with the collector's edition, but uh, I'm pretty sure that what I'm about to go over with you is in all the editions. So, Jetpack Joyride is a race game. It's, it's also a puzzle game where after three rounds, players are attempting to score the most points. So what you're doing is you're racing Barry, who you see here on a jetpack, racing through a lab. So let's go over how to set up. Uh, this is, you can play with up to four players, and you'll see that there's four versions of Lab 1, or Sector 1, Sector 2, Sector 3, Sector 4. And then there's a, a harder version of Sector 1 and Sector 4. If someone's really good at the game or is older and playing with younger players, you can shuffle these in uh, for someone who's more experienced or who might be just better at puzzles. So we're not going to show that for this version. So we're going to set it up for two players. So you just take it randomly for each player. And then even though I'm um, dealing them face up, we're probably going to set them, we're going to probably flip them over to the other way. So the first player is setting up the lab. So here's the path that Barry needs to race through using these uh, track tiles, which I'll explain what that involves in a moment. Here is player two. Again, sector one, two, three, and four. And you just put them side by side. Now, if you look at a particular sector, let's go over a little bit of the anatomy here. You'll see here are lasers, zappers, and missiles. So you want to avoid those. And here's a scientist because you'll see there'll be some mission cards where you either want to avoid them or give them a high five and uh, uh, place your track tiles adjacent to them. And these are coins, these are worth points. And here's the roof and here's the floor because there'll be some mission cards where you want to either avoid the roof of the floor or uh, touch it on purpose with your track tiles, uh, which you'll see in the mission card. So there is the first player setup and second player setup. Now, you'll see on my camera here are the mission cards, so you'll shuffle these up, and gadgets. Now, gadgets won't come into play uh, during the first round. On the second or third round, you will reveal as many gadget cards as there is players, and, the, and going from the least uh, scoring uh, player on that round will get to choose the first gadget, but I'll show that in a moment. So we need to flip up three mission cards. Now, each player can meet the requirements of these mission cards. So you can get all three, you can get one of them, you might get zero of them. If you're playing with two players, two players can get the same mission card, it doesn't matter. So when you flip up mission cards, if you're not sure what they do in the instructions, it provides mission summaries and gadget summaries right here. So another thing you do with setup is you'll see there's a certain amount of track tiles. I've placed half of them in the bag here. I took them out randomly because for two players you'll only play with 25 of the 50. So there'll be a chart in here, which I'll show you. So with two players, like I said, you play with 25 of the 50, and with three players you put 12 randomly back in the box, and when it's four you play with all the track tiles. So now we've set it up. And then you would go over the mission cards, which I'll go over here in a minute, uh, right now I should say. So this mission card says run 10 blocks on foot. So what does that mean? That means that at anywhere, it doesn't have to be consecutive. If you can get your one, two, three, four, and then maybe down the road you get some more Here's two more. And again, I don't want to hit these lasers, but I'm just pointing out that if I create a path through here where 10 of my track tiles, one, two, three, I have six so far. And again, these would be connected. If I can get 10 on the floor, 
I would get one, two, three, four, five victory points. Uh, collect no coins in a completed sector. So what does it mean to complete a sector? That means that if I get a path, my track tiles all the way through a sector and don't touch, don't overlap any coins, I would get five victory points for that uh, sector. And you can only get these mission cards once, by the way. If I do this in two sectors, I don't get it twice. I can only get it once uh, and around. Don't harm, don't cover any scientists. So that one's pretty easy. You just don't place any uh, track tiles over a scientist here. So those are the mission cards. I'll go over gadgets in a moment. But let's first uh, go over how you place tiles. So this is also a real-time puzzle game. So once you say go, everybody will be reaching for the same uh, track tiles here as fast as I can, and they're going to try to complete, uh, get through their lab. The first one to do so, uh, let me make sure what you say. You say, I've escaped, then everybody must stop. However, it could, the round could also end if every player passes. In other words, they can't make the pieces they work well, or they just don't want to try to make it work because you'll get negative points if you overlap the zappers, lasers, or missiles. So you might just be like, all right, I'm done. I'm passing because I can't make, uh, get through the lab without covering up those pieces. Uh, I'm sorry, those hazards. So let's go back to how you lay tracks. So you must start off the board. And it can be as far back as you want, but at least one part of it must touch. So I could start like this, anywhere I want. In fact, I don't want to overlap the laser here because that would be worth minus three points. If I overlap a coin, that's worth one point for each coin I overlap. So you've got to start off part, at least with one track tile partially off the board. And it could be as far back as you want. So I might do this play. Now the next tile, whatever I pick here, the next track, must touch the side of the end of the piece. So for instance, I can't do this. It's not touching the side of the end. I can go here, but now I'm covering up the scientist, which will prevent me from don't harm any scientists mission. So I, I want to avoid that. So I can put a piece here, here, here. So I'll go like this. I covered up the other coin. And again, I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. Uh, I'll go here. Again, you see how I'm, I have to touch the end of the piece with the beginning of the next piece by the sides. Diagonals are not allowed. You can't do diagonal pieces. So let me show it a little bit closer here on the other camera in case you're having trouble seeing that. So I can't do diagonal. I also cannot overlap as well. And you can't go off the top or the bottom uh, on the, below the floor or above the roof. So again, I'll go like this. And then I will go on to the next tile. Now see, I can't go here like this. I can go like this though. And maybe I'll go up here. Again, touching the beginning and the end of the two tracks. Now let's say I don't like what I played. Let's say I want to change this piece. I cannot pick this up and just change it out. I actually have to pick up everything in front of it if I want to change that out. So that's another important rule to remember. So I'm going through, let's say I make, I uh, place it here and, and I make a mistake. And then I go back over here like this. So at some point, Someone's going to say, uh, gee, I, I just forgot the phrase again. Someone says I've escaped or both players pass. So right here, I take a look at the, let's say the other player was quicker than me and this is as far as I got. Now I would score it. So I'd get, well, first off, I look at the mission cards. Let me move this out of the way. Did I uh, run 10 blocks on the floor? No, I don't get this mission card. Did I collect no coins in a completed sector? 
No, because even though I completed both of these sectors, I got through them. I got coins in each one. Did I not harm any scientists? No, I did not harm any scientists. So I would get four points for that. So you, take, you get the score pad out. Again, this is from the playthrough here. So if this is me over here. I get four points for that round for completing that mission. Now, someone else could have also completed that mission as well, but I, and that's fine, but I get four for that one. Now I look at my, if I place things legally. Okay, I did, did. Right here, I didn't on purpose because I wanted to show you. So this would come off, and that would be worth minus three points, and I would not get that coin. It doesn't mean that the tiles in front of it also come off. It just means that this is an illegal move, comes off for minus three. I also covered two lasers, so that's minus three each, and a missile, so that'd be minus three, minus six, minus nine, minus 12 for that. So again, I, I really messed up. So that's four minus 12, so I'd be negative eight now. Now I look at my coins, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I have six, so really it was a really bad turn for me, I'd be at minus two. If I, I'm trying to write, use good handwriting here. So again, I, was, I really messed up on purpose. And so you'll do that each round. You'll check to see who completed what missions. Did they place tiles properly? Did they uh, go uh, place their tracks over any hazards, which would be worth minus three each? And then after three rounds, whoever scores the most points wins. Now there's another couple other rules. I haven't explained gadgets yet and what you do between rounds. So in a two-player game, you're supposed to flip these over on the second round. But in a three or four player game, you pass them to the player on your left. So in a two player game, you flip them over, and in the third round, you would pass them. Uh, but in between also the first and second round, you get new missions, but then you get gadgets. So whoever is in last place would get first choice of the gadgets. So for instance, this one you can fly through missiles. This is really, really nice. It allows you to place track tiles over missiles and not get minus three points. Or this person uh, might take, you can fly through zappers, which is also minus three points. It saves you not having to take points. This one, for instance, would get four points for the player who takes that one. You get two points for every drop off the roof. So that means if you were to take this one and I had dropped down like this, I went from the roof all the way down to the floor Mining, mind you, this is not a good play because I'm going over uh, lasers. But if I had, uh, well, those are, I'm sorry, zappers. And I guess, which ones are lasers? I guess these are lasers right here. Yeah, these are lasers, these are zappers. So if I had this card and this card on the third round, because you're going to get two gadgets, this would be a legal play. Well, it would be a play where I don't lose points because I'm immune to zappers. And then because I went from the floor, I'm sorry, the roof to the floor, I'd get two points. And if I did it again, it's basically like making a, uh, a sine wave. So after the first round, you either pass the cards or flip them over in a two player game. You reset the, uh, the track tiles. You reveal two ga two, uh, the number of gadgets for the, depending on the number of players. And then the player who scored the least takes the first gadget, and then you go in order from least to greatest of points. You flip up three new missions, do another round, score it again, clean up, then, uh, and then you do another two gadgets, another three missions, and you play the last round. And then you look at the three rounds, which is right here, and whoever has the most points wins. So it's a very simple game. Uh, there's actually more content that I'm not going over that I basically went through and you'll see in the rule book uh, if this edition comes with all the things, which is, looks like it does. It comes with basically a lot of the, the little mini expansions that you can use. There's additional rules, additional cards and things like that. So, but this is just going over just the basic version. If we get 100 likes, we'll go over those other editions and do an additional how to play. Uh, so please consider subscribing and giving us a like. And like I mentioned, check out our review and playthrough video. So I'm David, and this is RP Gamepire. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.